Let us begin our meeting and uh, report, uh, present this to uh, your colleague from Canada. Uh, I would like to uh, introduce you to David. Uh, David is uh, from Canada, from University of Laval. Uh, and uh, today he will give a talk about, um, about his university, his institute, about, and about their um, experience in uh, like SPE and OSA chapter because they uh, have SPE and OSA, OSA chapter too and they made a terrific job uh, a lot of very beautiful uh, events and David will tell us so, uh, not not a lot not all not a lot about what because they, they had a lot of them. A lot of events. So please, please start. Okay, thank you for the introduction, uh, Valencia. So uh, the title of my talk is uh, The Repal. What is The Repal? It's, a, it's a, an acronym for the name, an acronym in French for the name of our student association, which is called the Regroupement des étudiants en botanique et optique de l'Université Laval, or a translation in English is the Optics and Botanics Student Association of Université Laval. So this, uh, so our student organization is affiliated with. <coughs> sorry. Is it affiliated with uh, the Center for Optics, Botanics, and Laser, which is a, 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 research, a research center uh, of uh, the whole province of Quebec, which is uh, based at Université Laval. Um, just to point out also that the, the Repal student um, organization is affiliated with the SPI and OSA chapters of Université Laval. So here's the, the outline of my talk. I will uh, start by talking a little bit more about me, what, uh, what like my curriculum, what I what I've done, and my uh, implication in this student association. Um, for, I will furthermore introduce you to uh, the domain of optics and photonics in Canada, in Quebec, and more, more particularly in Quebec City, with a view of uh, the different research centers, and more particularly, the COPL Research Center. And afterwards, I will talk to you about the, our student organization and uh, a lot of different uh, social networking and outreach activities that we've planned <coughs> in the past and that we are planning for, for the future. And I will conclude with, with uh, some, uh, a little bit of advice if you would like to plan similar events here uh, in Ukraine as well as uh, benefits for all those uh, who participate in these events. So who am I? Well, my name is uh, David Healy, or uh, David Healy, as we pronounce it uh, in French. I completed my bachelor's degree in uh, physical engineering in 2007 to continue on to do a master's degree in physics, more particularly in optics and photonics. And right now I'm a second year PhD student at Université Laval, and I'm doing my project in collaboration with a private company in, uh, in Quebec City, which is called Doric Lenses Incorporated. Uh, the title of my thesis is on uh, ultra-short, fast laser micromachining of uh, optical materials, more particularly the use of uh, femtosecond laser pulses to join optical materials together. So for a couple of examples, you can join uh, two glass uh, with, with the technique that I developed, like we can, can uh, join two pieces of glass, similar, dissimilar glasses, glass with uh, metals, with semiconductors. So uh, this is something that I've been working on for, uh, and I started at my, uh, during my master's degree project that I'm continuing on my PhD thesis. And uh, we just uh, applied for a patent uh, on this, uh, on, the, on this subject, which was uh, published uh, about a month ago. Now, uh, continuing on to uh, my student uh, implication, I am presently uh, the treasurer for the Repal organization, the, 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 for the SP and OSA student chapters. Um, I was sponsorship officer for the 2010 Photonic Games, which is an event, a completely original event that we, we created. We are at our, uh, we just, we did our third 
edition of this event in 2010. I will talk to you more about this during my talk. And later on, my talk. Yes, yes, uh, Valentin, he came to, to meet us when, during this, uh, this event to see uh, all the, the organization and, and how, how we, we planned the whole thing. And I was also co-organizer for the Photonics Toolkit event in 2009, which is like a, a conference for students in, specifically for students in optics and photonics, which uh, we had uh, several talks. Uh, workshops on uh, uh, on different subjects as well as uh, social activities. So, <clears throat> uh, we can continue on to optics and photonics in Quebec. Maybe starting off with uh, in Canada, uh, it's mostly concentrated concentrated in the provinces of uh, Quebec and uh, Ontario. Right here, there's a little work that's going on in, the uni in several universities in uh, Alberta and uh, British uh, Columbia. My hometown, Quebec City, is right here. And I pointed out the city of Montreal also, which are the two uh, biggest cities of the province of Quebec, where most of the companies and research facilities in optics are, are located. Um, so in those two cities, there are about 120 companies and uh, private companies and eight major research centers in this field. Maybe, maybe like to present to you a little uh, bit of numbers, uh, which date of, uh, from 2007. Uh, of the 118 companies in optics, it generated about 5,000 jobs. Um, in, uh, so we're I'm talking about to, you, to you about research jobs, uh, engineering, technicians, and also uh, admin, administration staff. As for the research uh, domain, um, as pointed out here, there's eight recognized, uh, very big and recognized uh, research centers. And of these, the 5,000 jobs, there are almost 1,700 jobs in these research facilities. Okay, thanks. Oh, I already have one. So, continuing on to maybe to precise to you uh, what's going on, more particularly in Quebec City, we have four of the eight major research centers of the province of Quebec, which are all of uh, different vocations here, as you can see, private, military, medical, and university. The first one is the National Optic, Optics Institute, or more, uh, more recognized uh, under the acronym INO, which is a private center, which uh, do uh, private research and contracts for companies and technology transfer. Continuing on to the military, uh, research Center. Uh, it's called the Def Defense Research and Development Canada, which is based at the uh, Val Cartier Army Base, just on the outskirts of the city, where they concentrate on uh, developing using lasers and light for military applications, such as uh, LIDAR spectroscopy for like very long range uh, applications. Continuing on to the medical, there's a <coughs> medical part. There's a third, third research center called, uh, is named Université Laval, Robert Giffard, where all the work on uh, the biophot biophotonics sector is done. And finally, the university at Université Laval, we, uh, is host to the Center for Optics, Photonics and Lasers, where we do mostly fundamental and applied research in a lot of different fields in optics, as well as uh, education. So to educate our the future researchers. So more particularly on the COPL, uh, what it is, it's a, it's a cluster of experts in this domain which are distributed throughout the whole province of Quebec. It is that most of the, uh, the experts, like the professors affiliated to this centre are located at Université Laval in Quebec City. But there are more in uh, Montreal, the, 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 the four here, um, the four schools here are located in Montreal and there's a small number also at Université de Sherbrooke. And uh, the research domains on which we concentrate on are enumerated here. 
I have a, a video to present to you, um, which will give you more detailed information on the research that that is done at the COPL Research Center. So uh, this is what I'm going to present to you right now.
research in optics and photonics at Universidade is of international caliber. Researchers and students work in an environment that allows them to fully apply their knowledge and skills in order to fulfill their aspirations. Together, they're developing the potential of optics and photonics to better shape the world of tomorrow. If you want more information, I have brought some uh, flyers here with a uh, link to uh, the website of the research center. Continuing on, that, that concludes my uh, introduction to my talk. Uh, I will, uh, for the rem rem remainder of my talk, I will talk to you about the Rival and uh, a lot of different activities that we have organized. Uh, first of all, uh, like as I mentioned, uh, the RIPAL is uh, the student association for graduate and undergraduate students in optics and at Université Laval, and we are affiliated with the SPI and OZA student chapters. What we did is we uh, created this RIPAL organization, which it will, will host both the SPI and OZA chapters. And we have given ourselves the main objective is to promote the field of optics and photonics toward current and potential students as we could extend this also to uh, the general public. And uh, how we do it is that, first of all, to take care of our current students, we organize several social activities like uh, parties, summer mixers, uh, sports exporting activities. We also plan industrial visits to, uh, to sharp up the, their interest in, uh, in, a, in a future career. And we also organize con conferences and workshops to, um, for, for them to learn new skills, skills that they wouldn't really have in a university uh, course, normal university course. And for, to promote the field for, towards potential students and, um, and the general public, we organize what we call like outreach act activities. So this is who we are. We have uh, the two presidents of the SPI and OZA chapters. There I am. I'm the treasurer of uh, this uh, association. And every officer has their, their specific role for, the, for uh, our activities to, to go well at every time. So, I'm going to present to you the several different activities that uh, we have done. Uh, first, first of all, is the, the annual Christmas party that uh, the Ripal organizes in collaboration <coughs> with the research center. And it takes a little different form every year. Uh, for example, this year we ordered uh, takeout food. So everybody had their little, little meal and they were invited to bring their own uh, beer and alcohol. Uh, we also took out uh, different games with, um, with the, the optics and photonics uh, theme. As you can see here, this is, what is, a, this is a, a game that we created. It's an uh, it's optical miniput. So instead of uh, using a, ba a ball, you use a laser beam. And uh, you will guide it with mirrors uh, throughout a course with obstacles. And each mirror that you use will serve as a as a, a hit of the ball. So, uh, and everybody is invited to this event. As you can see, this is a, a lot of students. This is a technician working for, uh, for the center. And professors, too, are invited. As you can see here, this is uh, my advisor who is uh, trying out the, the optical mini, mini putt game. <coughs> uh, every summer, we also organize a summer mixer uh, barbecue. I'm not sure of the term in English. Uh, we could talk about a five to seven. Um, but again, everyone who is affiliated to the center is invited. Most mostly students show up, but we still get a, a few professors. But this this time was uh, the last summer when we did this activity was very there, there was a very special event. 
Okay, as you can see by Veronique's face right here, it's like, oh my God, and she's pointing to this guy. Mm -hmm. Who is this guy? I don't know if any of you recognize him. Probably not. His name is Luc Langevin. He is now a pro uh, professional magician who is building his career. He's very popular in, in Quebec City. But why I'm talking to you about him is that he's a former student in physics at Université Laval. I had some uh, courses with him as an undergraduate. And he, uh, at a moment in his career, he was forced to make, a de to, to make the decision either he, to pursue his PhD or to pursue his career as a magician. So he chose to pursue as a magician and now he has, a, he has his own TV show. So, and, uh, well, I, I, maybe you should uh, note this down because I think he's, he's going to have a very big career in Baz and uh, not very known in, uh, it will be known in uh, a lot of different countries. Other, uh, this is something that is a, the, the, an annual pizza party which is offered by, by OSA. So, uh, Valentin, I don't know if, uh, have you ever uh, organized a, a uh, no. pizza party? No. Okay. Because this is uh, something that OSA offers to all of its, uh, its chapters, so one pizza party per year, which is again an, uh, an opportunity to uh, gather around, uh, eat pizza, drink beer, and uh, the, the, the last time we did it, well, uh, I didn't have a babysitter for my daughter, so I just brought her around, here she is. So she was very happy, and everybody was happy to, to, uh, to play with her. <laughs> And uh, this is another activity we, are, we organized to commemorate uh, Repal's five-year anniversary. So what we did is we, um, we organized a party in, a, in a locations uh, situated outside of, uh, of town, kind of uh, where uh, students were invited to come and just pay. Was, uh, we charged twenty dollars, I think, per person for the students and. Uh, at this location, uh, we all had like little cottages to uh, to sleep in. We also had access to a, a big room for for a gathering and uh, to party around. So it was a, this is an idea of the view that we had from this location. It was uh, along the St. Lawrence River in the fall. It was very beautiful with all the colors. But parties with uh, with students are can get very interesting as I. Uh, We'll show you by this picture. This is a, a game that we were we were, we were playing. We would all uh, gather around in a circle, and then we would challenge each other. And when you accept the challenge, well, you would have to grab with one one hand your ear, the other, the other hand your foot, jump around like this, and the goal is to knock the other guy down who is in the same position. So. <laughs> So continuing on to uh, network, networking activities. Um, one uh, activity that we tried uh, for the first time uh, this year is an industrial uh, roundtable where we invited uh, former students from the research center to, uh, to uh, supper to, for them to share their experience with current uh, gra graduate students at the center for the kind of like a, for a preparation of a, of a, um, a career in an in industrial context. We did something similar um, with another event we called the Graduate Undergraduate uh, 5 to 7, which we, uh, w where we invited uh, undergraduate students in physics to come meet graduate while uh, having a while sips, sipping on a couple of beers at the same time for, for them like, to ask questions and kind of like a uh, bolt up uh, the possibility for them to pursue their career as graduate students. I think the picture here is a nice representation of uh, the public that were that uh, the, the people that participated in this event. Um, last year we celebrated the research center's 20th uh, 20th anniversary. So uh, in collaboration with the research center. We uh, we helped organize this uh, one-day conference to uh, to, commemor to commemorate uh, this uh, its anniversary, which uh, and it took a form like a whole days a whole day of activities 
like uh, conference talks on different domains. Uh, a couple of examples here, we, we had a presentation of uh, the history of the research center, so from the, from the beginning and the, of, uh, of its form and then uh, all the members that, uh, that passed through it. Uh, we had also several talks given by professors here. This, in, in this particular talk, this professor is, de is developing a, a lens that we may all find someday in our, in our cell phone. It is a, a type of lens that will change its focal length when you apply a current, so uh, an electrical cur current on it. So uh, the application for this is an optical zoom small enough to fit in inside uh, a cell phone. So other activities uh, uh, in the, during this conference, we had a, a poster presentation by this given by the students, and it all finished with a, a five to seven, where you could sip on a couple of beers. Uh, the, this is a photonics toolkit, which we uh, uh, I talked to you a little bit about it at the beginning of my talk. It, talk, it was a three-day uh, activity with the workshop, conferences, talks, w which was designed for graduate students in order to uh, to uh, give them information and more a little bit more training on, uh, for example, on community how to. Um, communication skills on data processing tools, things that aren't normally included in the university courses. Uh, we also organized uh, we, we, uh, discussion panels where we invited corporate and uh, university rep representatives to come share their experience in, uh, in the, their career fields and it was also the opportunity for, uh, for uh, students to uh, ask specific questions um, other activities include the cocktail with the experts, as well as a COPL uh, lab tours. Uh, I was particularly responsible of this activity uh, during uh, during phot photonics toolkit. But I want to talk to you a little bit more about the cocktail with the experts here. It's something uh, very interesting. That was something that we tried for the first time, and that we are organizing again. Uh, will take place maybe in the next uh, two, one or two months. So, what it is, it's based on the concept of uh, speed, uh, speed dating. Well, we invited corporate, several corporate representatives from companies in optics to come to this event where we would uh, sit, sit uh, make the corporate representatives sit at tables and we grouped up the students. So, at the beginning of the event, the groups of students would uh, go meet a particular uh, group of representatives and based, again, based on the speed dating concept, after about 10 minutes, the bell rang and then the groups would change table and it would go on like this uh, until everybody has met everyone. And the goal of this would be like to, uh, to break the ice for, uh, for afterwards for, to, to pursue discussions while enjoying uh, a light meal. So uh, everybody uh, really liked this activity. That's why we're going to do it again in the next few weeks. And uh, um, Spi asked us to write a short article on, uh, on the Photonics Toolkit um, activity that we organized. They were a major sponsor. So uh, they offered us this opportunity. So you can find it on the SP website if you're interested. Or I could, I could uh, uh, give you a link. Um, another activity we uh, organized is the Ripple COPL grant. It's to, uh, to award students who have uh, contributed to the advancement in, in science and uh, to, to award great students by giving them a, a grant, a 500 grant, dollar grant in this, this case, where uh, the rules are, the particular rules are that he, he must be a SPI and OSA student member. He, had, he must have published either an article or a proceeding in it during the last year. And um, they, he must give, he or she must give a 12 minute presentation uh, in front of public and a jury followed by a question period and a jury made up of uh, professors of the center will decide the winner afterwards. So 
to, to continue on to uh, um, outreach activities. Again, we before starting to, to organize specific outreach activities, we we have to ask ourselves why are we doing this? And this is a little bit like a, a resume why we are pursuing on to organizing outreach activities. Um, because we think it's important, it's important to encourage high school students towards a career in, sci in science and engineering. Not just because there's not uh, a, a lot of people in it, but it's because it's, uh, it really leads to interesting opportunities. So, uh, another goal is to convince them that uh, science isn't boring. You can have a lot of fun while learning science. And we do this by like... Uh, and I give the example of the optical mini putt game. So this we 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 created a couple of games like these to to spark up interest. And specific activities that we organize are enumerated here. Um, and I will talk to you in the next slides more particularly on these activities about these activities. So uh, these three. The Science Day Camp, 24 Hours of Science and Girls Arts and Science. We participated as like a, a, to organize a small workshop, but these were bigger events, much bigger events that were organized throughout the whole university. So, <laughs> so. Uh, as I was saying, um, they were much bigger events, and we received uh, small groups of students for uh, to give them like a little workshop, uh, an introduction to the field of optics and photonics. They were uh, the, st the students we receive are of, uh, off of uh, high school, so between like 12 and uh, 16 years old. And the goal of these events was to uh, like it was like for public aware awareness of uh, of what is done in uh, science and engineering, so really to, to encourage a meeting between science uh, scientists and the general uh, public. And as well as I think the main objective of these, all these activities is to promote um, scientific careers for uh, kids and teenagers who are about to make their decision on, where, on what they will do for the rest of their, their lives as a career. So this is how we do it, using workshops, educational games like the mini pot, we have several more, and lab visits. So when we do workshops in the, ca in the classroom, we talk about like different phenomena that we encounter in optics, but we really, uh, we don't go in, in all the details, just, just like to, for, for them to know about like approximately what these different phenomena are and um, the sources of of these, uh, uh, we, we, took, uh, we took the ideas from these sources here for uh, the organization of the, the workshop. So here are a couple of examples, like a, like a bunch of teenagers exploring with a, a, te a telescope where by changing, you, you can adjust the focus by changing the distance between two lenses. Um, in this activity, they're discovering that the reflective and refractive properties of light where the goal is to to control the trajectory of a, a beam to uh, for it to attain a target so kind of like the same idea of the optical input game so this I already talked to you about it another game which also uh, sparks up interest uh, mostly for boys is a is a solar car race where we uh, put uh, very, very big lights on top uh, with the car at the bottom and they must use different, uh, different components that, that, that we, uh, we give to them to uh, guide the light on the sensors of the car to make it advance. So the examples are of components, we have like uh, uh, mirrors, we have a Fresnel lens, uh, we have um, pipes, aluminum pipes, which can also can act as a guide for the light. And going on to, uh, to lab visits, this is something I, uh, I'm getting to be like a little bit of kind of an expert at the university. Everyone, every time somebody has a, to, do, to do a lab visit, they call me up, hey David, are you available? So, uh, but 
Uh, as you've seen in the video, uh, most of our lab space is in a clean room environment. So when we bring the, the participants down to the lab, it's just really a particular experience for them to, to dress up in clean room clothing. It's probably uh, the only time that they will have the opportunity to do so. By only women. Only women. Yes, yes, this was uh, taken with the, uh, for the activity uh, Girls in Science. <laughs> But uh, we have uh, boys also uh, so <laughs> participating in, in other activities. But the activity girls in science, it's really uh, for the girl, for, for girls. Uh, or it's only girls who are participating. Very, very, very young people. <laughs> yeah, they're teenagers. <laughs> and uh, during the visit, they get to see like, different uh, components. And uh, us as uh, graduate students, it's an opportunity like, to, to show to show what kind of research we are doing here. As you can see, they're all crowding around like a, a camera where there's um, a panamorphic lens installed in front. So as you can see, they're all very close. But uh, the picture is taken is, a, is very distorted. So that, that's part of a, of a research project of uh, one of the officers of the robot. And this part, in this particular case, it was funny because like the fact that we made them crowd, crowd around, like they kind of like broke the ice, and they were really less shy for the remainder of the visit. As you can see, these girls they're like chilling around with the laser uh, security goggles. So, mm -hmm. so continuing on to uh, the photonic games, which is like uh, I think the main, uh, the, the the main part, the the the. the pretty much the biggest outreach activity that we've uh, organized. It's the activity that uh, Valentin, when Valentin came to Canada to, to meet us and see how it went on. So what it is, is a one day competition where we invite uh, 11th grade students to the university to compete and uh, the winners will get prizes at the end. So it's kind of like a motivation at the same time. Uh, the first event uh, the first time we organized this was in 2008. Um, we had uh, started off with uh, 60 students from one school, but in 2010 it was much bigger. We uh, invited 150 students from uh, three schools to come compete. So the challenges here is a list of the challenges that in which they, they were competing to uh, gain points to eventually to win the, the prizes at the end. So I've already talked to you about the optical mini butt game and the solar car race. I will present to you the others. So starting off with the optics quiz challenge, um, prior to the event, we went in their classrooms, in their schools to present them like a workshop, kind of like the one that I showed you before with the different components and just for, for them to, like, to discover different properties of light. But so, so they were prepared to answer a couple of simple questions. So I have one here, of a, of what, an example of a question where that, that, that they were asked during the, the quiz challenge. The gel optics challenge is again using like their knowledge, basic knowledge of the properties of light. They would have to control the trajectory of rays emerging from a ray box to send them to different targets. And the more targets they send to, the, the more points they accumulate. So what it looks like is, is this. So you place the ray box right here, and these are the targets. These are other targets where you have like positive point counting or negative. So the, but why it is called gel optics is that we, uh, we give them a kind of like a, a gelatine material that they can cut out with the shape that they want and use by using its refractive properties better guide the light, light, light emerging from the ray box. I think it, here you can see it come, there's a couple of rays coming out here and using jello and different components they can send the rays pretty much where they want. The laser maze challenge goal is to pass through the maze without sounding the buzzer. So how we did this is that we, it's kind of like on the basis of a, 
a security system like you see in the movies. There's like a laser, invisible laser beams that are, are close to the ground, and if you step on one, well, the buzzer will, will sound. So it's really using this uh, this concept. So they were kind of like blind, where you couldn't see the laser beams at all. And by trying a couple of times, uh, they would have, they would learn like to put the to place their feet at the correct positions to get through the maze without uh, cutting off one of one of the beams. Um, when I tried it, I was like a, I passed uh, well, the um, the participants, like the the organizers. We we got a chance to try it also, and. Uh, I was getting a little frustrated because you can't see the beam and like you're trying to guess where it is. So what I did to pass through it is I jumped from uh -huh. here to here. <laughs> and it worked. Afterwards, this beam here at the end, well it's um it's not at the ground level, it's a little bit higher, so you have to like uh, duck down to pass under under the beam. And of course, the lab tours, it's, uh, it's always something very, very special for uh, the participants. So we, uh, again, they get to dress up in clean room clothing. There are a couple of boys also in this one. <laughs> um, and um, I asked uh, friends, of, friends of mine to wait for us at their, 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 in their lab to present uh, their, like their project. Here's is one of my friends who's talking. The, uh, through a group of students about uh, the like optical fiber, the properties of uh, optical fibers, and what he is doing for his project. Uh, you can see here is a, image, a microscope image of an optical fiber, and like we also uh, try to do uh, demonstrations, like to really uh, for them to be. Uh, uh, I know the word in French, remember <laughs> in English. Um, like to, to, to call it like, wow, this is impressive. So what he did here, an example here, is that uh, this is a lens for uh, a CO2 laser, and this is a glass piece, and by sending like high power la la CO CO2 laser beam, um, you get this uh, white light emission. So, so it's just like an, uh, something very impressive. Doesn't have particular application, but... <laughs> Uh, here in this picture, it's another station uh, where we have a um, scanning electron microscope here and, and his operator who is kind of like talking about what he can do with his microscope and showing uh, very neat pictures. And the final contest is uh, the, the photo contest. These, these photos here are pictures taken uh, by the participants of the Photonic Games. What we do is we, uh, we offer them really a lot of different materials for them to, uh, to uh, like compose something that may be beautiful, maybe not. So the, uh, I think I've chosen out like, uh, some of the best ones. I know that uh, the, one of the, the, the criteria is that we ask them to like, illustrate uh, some properties, uh, some of the properties of light. So, this this picture here was the runner-up for this edition because you can there's a, the perspective of the image that's very nice, but he clearly illustrates like the reflective and refractive properties of light. This one here is uh, last year's winner, and. Uh, it was, it's uh, the most beautiful picture that uh, we have gotten up to date. Uh, we use it uh, for, uh, uh, the Repul uses it for publicity and even our research center uh, uses it now for like, just to, to have like, really neat pictures uh, to show. Here are the, the 2010 edition winners. So we, uh, we give them, they each receive a certificate uh, t saying that they they were great, they won first place, and their prize was that they each get a $150 uh, certificate card in, uh, in the Quebec's uh, biggest shopping mall. So, so that's really a nice uh, motivation for, uh, for, for them to be competitive during, during the competition. Yeah, yeah. And here is all the, the staff that was required for, 
for uh, the 2010 edition. So the officers of the event are all here, here I am. And these are all uh, graduate and undergraduate students who helped us with the organization, the planning and the organization and like uh, to, to greet all, uh, all the, the high school students during the event. So, you, uh, I'd like to give you a couple of tips if you uh, if ever you're interested in planning uh, something uh, similar. Um, first of all, start early. The earlier you start, the more time you have to fix uh, things that uh, that aren't uh, planned. And uh, of course, you have to have a you have to gather a good team of uh, organizers. And it's very important that inside this team, each person has their specific tasks. As, a, as an example, this, is, this was the, the committee of the Photonic Games and we really had each our specific tasks. Of course, we could, help, we could ask for a little help if we uh, had a little trouble. But. Uh, another tip is to keep things simple for the schools. Uh, so, it's something, um, it's not common for the, for the, the schools to send off their, um, their students on trips. So it is very important to keep them, things very simple. So like an example for this is that the, uh, we paid for the buses to bring them from the school to the university and back. And we also have to, uh, to respect um, the, the hours at which they must be at school. Uh, next thing is uh, to choose a date wisely. Uh, as I showed you, uh, there was a lot of uh, undergrad and graduate students that were involved for the day, the, the day of the competition. Well, we chose this day during the, the reading break uh, of the, the university session. Do, do you have a reading break here during a semester? No. No? No. no. no? Okay. So well, what, it, what it is is it just... Yes, yes, each semester, well, for, for undergrads, uh, undergrads get like a, it's, we call it the reading week. Uh, at the middle of the semester, it's just a week where they have no courses, so. In Kiev, there is a university, Kiev Mahila University. Yes. There is, exists this reading week. Okay, a reading week. And finally, I think to, to conclude, like, uh, the tips, uh, science is fun, yeah. You have to have fun doing this, and maybe if it's a more like a, a big job, you probably it's probably not your place to to be to try to organize this if you're not having fun while you're doing it. So the this activity, and we're at our third edition. We won uh, several uh, awards for uh, which helped us a lot to get uh, grants and to. Uh, to accommodate 150 students instead of only uh, limit ourselves to like uh, 60 students in one group because the more students we have, the more uh, money we need. So, <laughs> so here's a list of uh, the contests that, that we won. The Force Avenue Contest, which is a, a, an outreach um, contest uh, in Quebec where uh, two years in a row we were provincial uh, finalists. For the 2010 edition, we, we got a Laser Fest outreach grants, and of course, P and OZA are very important actors for, for this. Without them, we could have never get sufficient funding for, for the planning of this activity. Um, we also won the OSA, OSA Foundation Photo Contest winner. It's uh, tied off. It's a uh, tied off to the the photonic games because, well, here's the picture, because it was a picture taken during the photonic games event. So th this was recent, we got this confirmation <coughs> just a, a, a month ago, won this contest. So again, it's another, gave us another grant for next year's edition of the photonic games. Benefits of this, so what? Why, why is it interesting for everyone to, to participate in these events. I think uh, for the participants, the, the students that we, uh, we receive, it's kind of like a unique experience. 
uh, for learning and uh, it helps them develop also self-esteem. And uh, more particularly, the winners of the event, the events is like, okay, wow, okay, you came first place or second or third over 150 students that participated in this. And they could surely spark up interest also in the studies and the career as uh, scientists, engineers, a career in science, maybe particularly in optics photonics, it will, it will get punch in the balance, but for our organizers, so like the, the whole uh, organizing committee, it's managing skills, and it's, these are skills again that you don't really get in, uh, you, don't, you don't really learn in, um, in university courses, you learn them by managing yourself, uh, by, uh, by uh, participating in such activities. For all the volunteers that were uh, that, that were um, <coughs> that participated in, in this, it's, um, most of them were uh, animating several activities. So it's, these are like uh, these are teaching skills that they're developing, as well as an opportunity to do, to do uh, networking with other other uh, undergraduate and graduate students. For the host center. Of course, it's a lot of visibility and publicity, and it's, there's a potential to uh, attract uh, future future students and like for, and for like uh, the students that we we invited for them like to come. It's like the, probably the first time visiting a university to give them uh, the um, for maybe it will be they will they will want to come back afterwards after like uh, kind of after uh, breaking the ice. And finally, for the sponsors, this part is not always uh, easy because uh, it's, it's not always that easy for potential sponsors to give you money for your event. But again, it's uh, uh, to do this, we offer them uh, publicity and visibility. For example, on the websites, on the t-shirts uh, the, the that we give to the participants. If they give a certain amount, we will uh, we we will uh, show their logo on like a. A lot of different things for uh, that that we use during the, the event, and of course it uh, sparks a little more interest in the, the in the, their field activity and maybe potentially attract future employees and buyers. So I would like to conclude by uh, talking to you about the benefits of being an OSA and SPE student member. I've been a member of the Repol for uh, almost three years now. And it's a little list of, uh, of benefits. Of course, uh, when you sign up to OSA and Speed, they ask you, um, would you like to, uh, to receive a free online journal? So at my house, I receive uh, uh, online. So you have access in your, through email to these online journals. And you receive also a, a magazine by the mail to your house. Of uh, it's a kind of like a of a, um, the it's a publication of OSA and SPI where they talk about breakthroughs in the in the domain. Particularly, all these uh, these organizations again SPI and OSA uh, they're very important to us because uh, we couldn't uh, do all uh, all that we do we have done uh, without their uh, support and uh, and funding. Investe Laval and the COPL because uh, they are our host university and uh, they give us really a unique, um, it's really a, a unique place to uh, uh, to learn like for, for graduate students like to evolve in a, a kind of high tech place with, uh, with uh, high tech uh, laboratories and, and equipment. I would like to thank you for uh, your attention and a uh, warm welcome. I, I've been in Ukraine uh, since yesterday. I'm having a really a great time. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you.